by Mr. David Hagar from Jumara College. Thank you. Uh, well, welcome everybody. I know that um, often these afternoon sessions are quite hard, uh, often called the graveyard shift. You've had lunch, you're all full, um, but try not to fall asleep. Um, uh, hopefully what we discuss today will be beneficial to you. Um, <clears throat> so what we're looking at is how we integrate um, digital learning into science. And obviously by we, I mean uh, the context that I come from. Um, I just want to give you a bit of a background about um, my situation. I've been teaching for 16 years. Um, in that 16 years I've had a range of roles um, from teaching uh, the three sciences to being a professional tutor um, and currently I both teach physics and I am a Sims manager so that's kind of the administration uh, part of the school. Um, I've taught the South African curriculum, the English national curriculum and the international baccalaureate and I've taught in South Africa, in the UK and now um, in Dubai. Um, the school I come from is Jumeirah College. Uh, we teach the English natu National Curriculum um, at JC, um, a non-selective school, um, mixed, 11 to 18. Um, we've got over 60 nationalities in the school and um, size of just over 1,000 students. Now, I know for, uh, I've just been speaking to someone uh, before the session, that is a relatively small school in some of your situations. So I mention this because it's important to realize the context from which I, I'm speaking. And hopefully, um, even though your context may be different, you may be able to take something from what I'm saying and implement it um, into your situations. Um, in terms of our, our GCSE results, we get fairly good results. Um, and we have about 10% of our cohort doing uh, two GCSEs, 80% um, do three GCSEs. And then a further 10% who are kind of an accelerated stream uh, do three GCSEs um, and do an added A-level in those two years as well. Um, so very motivated students, as I mentioned earlier, um, non-selected, but very motivated students. And so this is the, the kind of environment that um, we are able to apply these um, digital strategies with. Before I go on to our digital strategies though, I am going to show you a video clip which you may or may not have seen before. It's only just over a minute, um, so please watch with interest. And I think as teachers, we need to have the um, idea that we need to adapt and adjust all the time. Regardless of how long we've been teaching, we need to continually adapt and adjust to whatever is relevant um, today and whatever is relevant particularly for the students and the way they engage with education today. And um, this is something that's relatively new um, for me in terms of using digital te technologies and certainly in, in my context at my school. However, I've already seen within the short space of time how it's impacted the learning um, of students. Now obviously you can get subscription uh, and, and uh, different software packages that you can pay for and then there are the free packages as well. Currently we use Caboodle which is uh, linked to our exam board um, so we pay for that and they provide lots of resources there which is great. Um, we are investigating AlphaSoft, we haven't used that yet so we're investigating that um, for next year. But the free resources are really the ones I want to focus on. Um, Edmodo and YouTube is what I'm really focusing on in this session. Uh, but we've also used Google Docs, um, Google Drive, 
Educanon, and Socrative, some of our department use, but the rest of us are kind of getting onto that. And obviously there, there are loads of others as well that are, are interesting, that we're looking at, uh, that we may implement um, from time to time. Um, I've learnt myself today already about two new things that I want to investigate from other workshops that I've attended. Now I would say that if you've um, attended the Sparkle workshops earlier this morning, um, one or two things that I'm going to say uh, may sound very familiar. Uh, because some of it was covered um, in the Sparkle uh, presentations this morning. But as I said, I'm going to focus on two things. I'm going to focus on Edmodo, how we use Edmodo, and then I'm also going to focus on YouTube um, and how we use YouTube um, in our context. So, um, Edmodo, <coughs> um, why Edmodo is useful is because the, uh, the interface of it is very much like Facebook. Can I just have a show of hands? How many of you actually use Facebook? Okay. Or how many of you have a Facebook account? Whether you use it or not, it's something different. How many of you actually have a Facebook account? I would say probably the large majority of you, right? And you can probably guarantee that for your students, most of them use Facebook as well. And so um, why Edmodo is, is useful and beneficial is because the interface is very much like Facebook, but it is for educational purposes. Now, previously we, um, we had a Facebook group, uh, which we still have, um, and that was useful for us as, as a school and particularly as a, as a physics department, um, with, especially with our alumni. Um, in order for our alumni to communicate with current students. So uh, if we had year 13s applying to certain universities um, and there was an alumnus at, at that university, they can often ask questions about particular professors they were having um, their interview with. So that is a route we still use, but that is reserved for that kind of communication. Other posts that perhaps our um, you know, now university students are posting for our year 13 students to think about. Um, but towards the end of last year, we kind of moved and we did a trial run with Edmodo with just a few year groups. And we found it um, really successful. Um, so as a result of that, this year we've rolled it out to all our year groups um, within science. Um, this is what the uh, page looks like. Uh, you can see my name in the top right hand corner there. Uh, and like Facebook, you can assign a picture to yourself. Um, and so what happens is the students need to sign up to Edmodo they have their own um, Edmodo account and you create classes um, and each class has a group code. Once your students have signed up with their own account, they can then join your class. And once they've joined your class, everything that you post to that class is accessible to them. So today, for example, um, I've not written anything down in terms of cover work of the lessons that I'm missing. All I've said for the cover teacher is the students need to check Edmodo. All the work that I've posted for them is on Edmodo. I know that will be pushed to them via the emails. They know they need to check Edmodo. So the minute they link in, it will be there for them. For me, there's a beauty in this, in that number one, I don't need to be physically in school to set work. I can set it wherever I am in the world. Number two, there are no excuses for the students. If they've missed a lesson, uh, that work is still accessible to them, whether they've been ill or been doing something else around the school. Um, and there is no excuses. Oh, I forgot to write it in my homework planner. Um, I lost the paper I wrote it on. No excuses. It's there. It's available for them, uh, whether they are traveling or not. I've got a student who uh, will not be here from the end of this week throughout next week uh, because she's doing interviews in the UK. Um, so she's asked me for work and all I've said to her is, make sure you check in Modo while you're away. The work will be posted there. Um, so regardless of where they are in the world, it's accessible to them. Um, so, <clears throat> Edmodo is useful in that it's learning in a familiar environment, very similar to, to Facebook. Um, when you as a teacher or students sign up to a particular group, so I signed up to the science group, um, what that means is that I can post to that group uh, anything science related. Anyone around the world who is signed up to that group has access to what I've posted. Likewise, I have access to all the information that anyone else around the world has posted. So for me, it's a valuable resource as well. Quite often when you click on um, the home page, there are loads of posts from people from all different parts of the world. Some are relevant, some are not. 
but the relevant ones are the ones that are, that are interesting uh, to me. Um, sorry, let me just go one back. I'm having a bit of a malfunction here. Sorry. Okay, let's leave it on that. Um, as I said earlier, it's an online classroom in the fact that uh, you can post work to that. Um, we have implemented in our particular um, setting a bring your own device. Um, so it's quite useful in terms of flipping the classroom around. Uh, I don't know if many of you are familiar with the idea of flipping the classroom where a lot of work is done outside of the room um, and consolidation happens within the classroom. So I can, I can uh, you know, put things on Edmodo for the students to do in preparation for the class. Um, they then just consolidate that when they actually come um, into the lesson. Um, as I said earlier as well, you know, you can put things on there. You don't physically have to be in front of them. However, in saying that, if there are questions that arise from the work that they're doing, like Facebook, they can ask questions and those questions come to me. I can then respond uh, when those questions come through. Or what often quite happens is that other students respond before I can get in. So it's a good communication between me and the students and between the students and each other. And it's a, it's a, a real time um, experience of the classroom, even though they're not physically within the four walls um, of the actual classroom. Uh, you can do polls on there. So quite often uh, after an exam, you'll just put up a poll. Um, how did the exam go? Thumbs up, thumbs down. To get a general feeling about how students felt about the exam they've just come out of. Um, and as I said earlier, they, you can connect to resources that are posted them from um, you know, teachers around the world. Um, Edmodo can also be used to track uh, progress. So if students are submitting work um, on Edmodo, so some of the work that I will put up there, they can submit online. Um, others, I will require them to um, kind of just watch clips or to actually print out a paper copy. Um, you can actually track their progress. And so for every task that they've done, it says whether it is submitted, uh, it, can, it says the grade that they've achieved as well. So it is available for them to see. It is also available for their parents to see. And that particular tool I find exceptionally useful. The parents have a login code as well uh, that is attached to the class. That, so they can see exactly over the last you know, 10 assessments how their child has done. So when it comes to parents' evening, nothing is really a surprise. They can see exactly what has been handed in, number one, and secondly, how they've achieved in all the things that they've, they've handed in. Um, but in addition to that, uh, there are quizzes you can set. Um, you know, you can start a discussion uh, so the students can, can uh, post on there. Um, you can iron out any misunderstandings or confusions um, or frustrations with regards to that. So really for us as, um, as a team of teachers, Edmodo has revolutionized the way we, we think about things. Right at the start of the year, um, all our resources that we used to photocopy uh, and hand out to students as we went along, exam papers, you know, mark schemes, etc., etc., because it's all electronic in any, in any case, we put it all on Edmodo. So from day one, they had all the resources available. Now, I'm sure, as with you, there are too much resources for students to work their way through. And I always tell parents and students this as well. You should never say that there's no homework. Because if you are an independent learner, there is enough work there for you to work your way through. Um, and especially for students sitting exams, um, those who achieve really well uh, are the ones who will actually look for that extra work. They don't need to try and find you. For us, it's all there already. So it's quite a useful platform to have our resources placed there. All they have to do is just click on the folder button and see what's available. By the way, I forgot to say earlier, if you have any questions while I'm speaking, please put your hand up. Uh, don't
much uh, whether they're sharing, sharing the answer or not because in effect, yeah, they, they are learning. Sometimes, for example, uh, you know, all our, all our exam papers are up there. So when, if they do it beforehand or afterhand, it doesn't really matter because the process of actually going through it, some of them will actually study the mark scheme you know, for, the, uh, for the exam paper. For me, at least they're making an effort. They're not doing nothing, they're doing something, which I think will still enhance the learning. Um, yeah, it, it depends on, on how you view that whole thing of, of sharing information. Um, for me personally, that's, that's not too much of an issue. Any other questions or comments on that? Okay, let's move on to YouTube then. Um, <clears throat> probably about 10 months ago, uh, we decided as a department to uh, create a YouTube channel. You know, we had been looking at YouTube for resources and there are lots of great um, professionally produced uh, YouTube uh, channels out there. Khan Academy for one, uh, Minute Physics um, as another. And they're all very slick, very good. Um, but we thought there are some things that we didn't quite find there that was, that was part of our curriculum that wasn't covered there. And so we started developing these two to three minute clips just with an iPad, you know, we've got kind of a, um, a uh, setup where we put the iPad on and we just work on a whiteboard, you know. So all you see on the clip is our hands on a, on a big whiteboard um, being recorded. No longer than, than five minutes, but generally between two and three minutes um, as a clip. And to our pleasant surprise, the students actually loved it. Um, the reason being is that, that they are two to three minute clips, so very quick. That's kind of a warts and all approach. Um, it's us, as you see us in the class, making mistakes, rectifying those mistakes. Uh, it's not slick, it's not professional, but the students loved it. Um, and what was even more significant to me, because you can actually track um, how often it's been viewed. Uh, as I said, we've only been using it for about 10 months, but towards um, the, summer, the end of the summer term, when the year 12s and year 13s were doing the exams, um, a half an hour before the exam, I just happened to be looking at our YouTube channel and the viewing numbers were going up kind of every few minutes. So they were obviously standing half an hour before the exam on their phones watching these clips, just getting a quick review of what they had studied already, which for me is great. You know, the fact that they are using technology just to, to revise those sorts of things. Um, we also use YouTube, uh, we, so what we've done is on our channel we've divided up each of the sections, each of the subjects um, within science has um, a space and we basically just upload these videos uh, based on the different units um, within our subjects. Um, but many students actually request videos, things that they're uncertain about um, and so we'll, we'll make a recording and, and post it up there. So a lot of our recordings up there are from student requests as well and certainly for us that has helped. Now how this links to Edmodo is that, um, as I said, students often um, post things on Edmodo as well. And I've seen many examples where students have come across websites or they've come across um, PowerPoints in their research or they've come across YouTube clips and they'll often say on Edmodo, this I found exceptionally useful. Um, the rest of you, year 10s, may find it useful as well and they'll post the link there. Um, some of the things that I haven't come across myself and I then look at it and say, yeah, it is, it is fairly useful. So certainly um, YouTube has been a, a valuable tool for us. I just want to show you some of the stats which when I looked at it actually surprised me quite a bit. Um, at the moment we've got 121 videos up on the channel. They're all between two to five minutes, um, 192 subscribers. In the time that we've been doing it, there's been um, over 37,000 views. And to my utmost surprise, remember these are two to five minute clips, there's on average about 48 hours of viewing a week, which for me was uh, staggering, uh, considering that they, those very short clips. Um, so certainly something that we uh, are very excited about and will continue using, I think, certainly for uh, the near future, unless something more uh, revolutionary comes along. Looking at that clip we watched earlier as well, it's interesting that YouTube is the second most, uh, most used search engine, um, I think, after Google. 
Um, so I think really a valuable resource that if we're not using it, um, it's, a, it's a resource that we um, are denying. So, I think all the digital resources we use should have a certain purpose. And hopefully, uh, the way we use our digital resources uh, achieves these um, aims of maximum uh, impact learning. Uh, from being fun, stimulating, uh, timely, meaning that uh, they can be accessed at the time that the student uh, needs it. Uh, they are personal, they are in a safe environment. Um, they can provide reflection um, on the student's work. Um, a student voice in terms of how do you define the exam, um, how do you define this lesson, how do you define this resource, so it can inform your future planning and your form, uh, future teaching. Uh, interactive um, and it goes beyond their engagement within the lesson as well. And that really brings me to uh, the end of what I would like to say um, with regards to this. So really there's a chance for questions now and then um, as I said if you've got your devices I'd like you to take them out because I would like us now to go on Edmodo and actually um, have a bit of play around. You can go onto YouTube as well. I've created a What Works Science group so um, if you have got an account already, you, I'll give you the code, you can sign up. If you don't have an account, I encourage you to sign up for an account now. You can then join the group. And then I've got one or two tasks on there for you to actually complete. Um, if you don't have your own device, I've got uh, 15 iPads here, which hopefully are fully charged. Uh, please make sure they come back to me. Um, but yeah, let's, let's open up the floor for any questions at this stage. Um, and then we can go into the developing learning bit. Any questions? Okay, if there are no questions then, um, if you can grab out your devices or at least uh, share out the, the iPad, they are 15 here, um, so that you can at least see what, what others are doing. Yeah, please, thank you. So, if you have a look at this, you can see that um, these are the posts from people around the world. I don't know who Mrs. Swati is, but she's obviously somewhere in the world, and she's posted something. She's actually posted a question uh, that hopefully will be answered by someone in this science community. Um, so it's not only uh, somewhere where you can post um, you know, resources, but it's a place, really a forum for us as teachers where you can answer questions. Once you've signed up, look on the left hand side here where it says groups. If you click on the, um, the plus sign and join groups, you can then put the Edmodo code in. Yes. Let me just grab this again. I think we. I don't understand that. Okay. Are you able to sign it? It doesn't seem to be. Yeah. I'll show it on. I'll show it on the board then. Okay. Put it. And now it is based and. Uh, okay, so you've signed yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. So you join the uh, What Works group, what which is that code over there. So, if you click on that, it's not seem doesn't seem to be coming up quite well on here. But if you click on that, it Can should I should I will in a minute here. Yeah. Oh. It, um, it should not? give you. I don't know why it's not coming up. So on some devices it is, but others it isn't. You know, often it's quite, it's better on a laptop or PC. Um, but it should say join group then, you just plug the code in. Okay, but let so me show you in a minute, uh, okay. I'll show you now. Okay, some people have asked me, if you're using the iPads that I've provided, you have to go to settings and then um, apply the Wi-Fi under guest, right? Otherwise the internet won't work. Um, in terms of signing up, obviously, you'll be signing up as a teacher. 
So once you click on the I'm a teacher, this will be the page. You just need to fill in your details. The email year um, is important in that anything that's posted um, on the groups that you've created will then be emailed to you as a notification that you've got, uh, there's been a post there. And likewise for students, when you post things, uh, it will be emailed to them that you know, they've got um, some sort of post on there. Um, obviously, just press submit and you should be ready to go with regards to that. Um, once you're signed up, you should then have access to um, the home page. Now there's two things here. What I'd like you to do is to join a group. In that case you just click the plus sign there and then as a teacher you can either create a group. So all these groups on this end here I've created. Those are my classes and I've also created the What Works Science group. Or you can join a group. Now I would like you to join this group. So if you click join it asks you for group code. And that's the code you need to put in. So once you've put in this group code over here, uh, it will then give you access to some of the posts that I've posted for that group code or for that group. Uh, once you're in that group, uh, try and do some of the things that I've posted um, there already. Yeah, so, so, so when you create a group, um, that automatically generates a code. So you then have to give that code to the student. What happens about the group code? When you create a group, a group code is automatically generated. You then give that group code to your student that you want to be part of that particular group. So all my groups down the side, over there, all of them have different group codes. Now, what Edmodo sometimes does is, after a certain time period, it locks the group code. So uh, after about two weeks, uh, and if students haven't signed up to their group within that time period, they can't. You have to then reset the group code. Sorry, question. The code is sent to our email? Um, the code is sent to your email, but it's also, you can check the code at any time um, by just clicking onto the actual group. So if I click on there, that's the What Works Science group, there's a group code over there. Yeah, so there's certainly two things that I'll be looking at more is Twitter and then Blend Space as well. Um, Pictures of models ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know some, some of our, our drama department, for example, has a Twitter page and a music department as well, so they, they will put stuff on there. Um, yeah, but you don't have a... We, had a... we ran a study skills session like with the IBs and we had kind of a Twitter feed in the kind of set up like a conference. Yeah. And we had a, a one hashtag and just kept up the just some techniques they use and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Pictures yeah. yeah. It's great, but it's quiet. I think for someone who's a bit older, it's sort <laughs> of a bit weird on this Twitter thing. Yeah, it's just, but it's what the students are using, on, isn't it? So. I think some might have tried. I think once you once you get comfortable with the fact that perhaps your students know a bit more than you do in terms of IT, once you're comfortable with that, then you can move forward. Yeah. Unless you get over that hurdle, um, yeah. you know, because traditionally teachers teachers knew the knowledge and imparted the knowledge. Yeah. Things have changed. Definitely changed over the last few years. Excuse me. Hi. Join, join. Okay, so if you click on that, it doesn't seem to be working. Yeah. So I think there seems to be a bit of a fault, you know, on some of these devices. But did you see how I was able to do it on the board? Yeah. Right. So if you click that there, you click join. Another window comes up. You put the code in, and um, all of that appears. What I will do is, um, some of you are not able to join the group. So what I will do is. Um, I will put up the post that I've put for this group, uh, which is the one post was um, just to vote whether you found the workshop useful 
and can take away at least one idea, whether I've shared the idea or if your colleagues have shared the idea um, that may be useful in your classroom. Strongly agree, agree, disagree. Uh, we've had three people vote already. Um, the other thing that I've posted was, um, and this you can certainly do without actually looking at it, Moto, to share the ideas about anything you found useful um, in today's workshops. And I don't mean this one in particular, I'm talking about the workshops you've attended so far. I was sharing with that group over there, I picked up something by Blendspace, which I've not um, used before, but it's certainly something I'm going to investigate. And then secondly, uh, the use of Twitter um, professionally is something I want to look into further. So that's certainly been useful for me um, today. So please uh, take a few moments to share that either amongst yourselves in your tables or even um, cross table sharing. Um, and then the last thing, or the first thing I actually posted was to watch um, that YouTube clip. Um, and that's the one that we watched right at the beginning of the session. Um, you may want to look at it again and see there may be something interesting that clicks a second time round. So I'll leave that up there. If you can't actually join the group, uh, you may still be able to access the YouTube clip by just uh, putting in that um, address there. And certainly you can do uh, the second task there about sharing ideas uh, between each other. For the session, we have under two minutes uh, left. So I expect to hear a bell ringing very soon. Are you all okay on the side? Yeah. Have you been able to sign up? To sign up? Yeah. Okay, great. Pleasure. What I have to do after that? Okay, so you should be clicking on there, and there should be a drop down menu that says great to join. It doesn't seem to be showing up. Um, but did you see how I did it on, on the screen? Yeah, I did yeah. the same thing. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> so if you click on the turn, oh, you've got, yeah, you've got the actual code there. Then John here, the just me. Yeah. Yeah, wait, wait. No, it doesn't seem to be, it doesn't seem to, oh, there we go. No, that's great, that's creating a group, yeah. No, that's creating a group. Um, you can plus here, wait. It, yeah, it should come up as create or join, yeah. It's not working. But it doesn't seem to be... The window is not saying it. Yeah, so there should be a window yes, yes, you that opens get, up that says join or create. Okay. Oh, there we go. So yeah. what's the right here? So that's the code over there. H2EGSW. Uh, so I can yeah. interact with the student through this ed model? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So okay. Once, they've won that, once they've signed up to your group, okay. um, so how we've set it up is exactly okay. yeah. so they can post information on there or okay. yeah yep. so um, if we just go oh yeah have you joined the science community already okay yeah. yeah okay so if you go back to there and you want to create a group okay I'm just waiting for this click in once again if you click on there there should be a window open yeah, yeah. that says create or yeah, it's loading uh-huh no no no, no. It should say create or join. Oh, fine. It, it yeah. happened. Yeah. That's okay. okay. There we go. So when you uh, you just have to name what group it is, select like a grade. Name, like uh, like name what? Year ten. Year ten one. Year ten. Yeah. Or something like that.